Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to be looking at how you can improve the performance of your website or application using the AWS CloudFront Content Delivery Network service. In this video, we're going to walk through step-by-step -step the process of creating a CloudFront distribution for your website. CloudFront will cache the website contents or objects at various edge locations around the world in order to lower latency and improve the performance of your application. So if that sounds good to you, please continue to watch this video and let's do this. All right, so first of all, what exactly is AWS CloudFront? Well, a quick look at the Amazon website tells us that CloudFront is a fast, highly secure, and programmable content delivery network. The way it works is that CloudFront caches your website or application files, such as HTML, CSS, or JavaScript files, as well as things like images and video files at data centers around the world, known as edge locations. The result is that users are able to download the content much faster from an edge location that is closer to them rather than if the request had gone all the way to the origin server. Let's take a look and see what this looks like. So in the first slide, there is no content delivery network, so all of the requests go directly to the origin server, regardless of location or distance from the server. Users that are geographically far away will experience more latency than users that are close by. Now in this slide, we've put AWS CloudFront in place, and we can see that the website content is now cached at various edge locations around the world. The user's requests go to the edge location nearest to them first, and only go all the way to the origin in the case that the content is not currently present at that edge location. Now, application content will be cached at an edge location for a period of time known as a TTL, or time to live. The time to live value can be specified by you, and the default value is one day. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and create our CloudFront distribution. Now, this distribution is going to be for a website that I hosted in my previous video entitled How to Host a Website with Amazon S3. So if you don't currently have a website set up in the S3 bucket, you may want to pause this video and go back and watch that one first, link in the description below. Even if you don't want to host an entire website or don't have one handy, uh, even a simple Hello World HTML file or a single image or something like that would be enough to uh, go through this exercise. All right, so let's go ahead and log into our AWS console. And let's go to CloudFront. Okay, now once you're here, go ahead and click on Create Distribution. And under the first section where it says Web, go ahead and click on Get Started. All right, now we need to fill out this form in order, in order to create our CloudFront distribution. So first of all, I'm not going to cover every single field here because as you can see, there are quite a lot and some of these are kind of advanced features that we don't really need. So I just want to cover the basics here just to get our, uh, our CloudFront CDN up and running, okay? So go ahead and click into your uh, origin domain name. And if you've set up a website in S3, then you should see uh, a, domain, or a choice of a domain name that follows uh, domain.com.s3.amazonaws.com. So go ahead and select that one, and your origin ID should be pre-populated. This could really be anything. This is just a unique identifier for your distribution. Um, now, origin path, you could potentially, you know, add some folder name here. Oops, didn't spell that right, but I think you guys know what I mean. Uh, you could specify any subfolder under your website root structure if you only wanted to target that specific folder with your CloudFront distribution. But we want this to apply to the entire website at large, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this blank, all right? Now, restrict bucket access. Um, what this does is once your CloudFront distribution is up and running, um, if you select yes to restrict that bucket access, your users will, will no longer be able to access your website via your S3 bucket URL they will have to go through, they'll be forced to go through your, your CloudFront URL. So I'm gonna go ahead and click yes on that. Okay. All right, let's leave the rest uh, set as default. Go under default cache behavior settings. I'm gonna change a few things here. 
Um, I'm going to select redirect HTTP to HTTPS. Okay, so we're, we're forcing users to use the uh, secure protocol. I'm going to add the uh, options HTTP method, so I'm going to select the second option here. Uh, this isn't really that important for this exercise. You could just as well leave the first one selected, but I don't know, just um, best practice. I'll, I'll include this one too. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We can leave all of this as it is. Okay. All right, so here's uh, something that's pretty important, your TTL. Now, the minimum TTL is set to zero. The maximum TTL is set to, I'm not even going to try to read that number, uh, 31,536,000 seconds. Now, this minimum and maximum TTL, they only come into place if you have certain headers set. And if you, you click on this little I here, you can get more information on any of these fields, by the way. Um, so if you notice down here, it says the value that you specify applies only when your origin adds HTTP headers, such as cache control max age or cache control s max age. So really the one that you want to focus on is the default TTL. This will apply regardless, okay? So right now it's set to 86,400, which is 24 hours. And I'm just going to leave it set to this default value. All right, and the rest of these options we can just leave as the default. Um, down to distribution settings. All right, now let's uh, focus our attention on the alternate domain names field. Now, when you basically when you create a, a CloudFront distribution, um, Amazon is going to assign sort of a random URL to that distribution. But here we can enter values if we want to associate like our, our regular um, website URL with our CloudFront distribution. So. I'm going to go ahead and put my website domain here, Hexel Energy, and then just on the next line below it, I'm going to put a, whoops, I'm going to put the www version of the same, since technically that's a separate subdomain. All right, so SSL certificate. Now, again, by default, we can, we can use our CloudFront URL and serve traffic over HTTP or HTTPS to our end users. However, if we want to use HTTPS with our custom domain name, Hexall Energy in this case, then we're going to need a custom SSL certificate. So I don't have a certificate. Um, what do I do? Uh, the good thing is here I can take a little detour from our process and request a certificate from Amazon. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Request or Import Certificate. Okay, that should open up a new tab. And I'm going to go ahead and just to cover all subdomains, I'm going to do star dot. Hexall Energy, so whatever your domain is, .com. Okay, and uh, go ahead and click on Next. All right, so validation method. This is where basically Amazon is going to validate that I am, in fact, the owner of the domain. So I'm going to leave DNS validation selected and click on Review. Okay, and just verify that everything looks good and go ahead and click on Confirm and Request. All right, now as part of the validation process, we need to go ahead and create a, a CNAME entry in our DNS configuration based on the values that Amazon is providing. So go ahead and expand your domain right here. And luckily Amazon can do this work for us. So just go ahead and click on create record in route 53. And go ahead and confirm, click on create. Okay, and you should get a success message here saying that the, the DNS record has been created. Um, now go ahead and let's click on continue. All right, now at this point, we just need to wait. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and restart it when our status has changed to success. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes, and as you can see, the uh, status of my certificate has now been updated to issued. So that looks good. Now let's go back to our CloudFront um, distribution setup, and let's go ahead and specify that certificate. Okay, so under SSL certificate, let's select uh, custom SSL certificate, 
And we should be able to find this here in the dropdown. Here it is. So go ahead and select your newly created certificate. All right, and scroll down a bit. We can leave all of the other defaults as is and go ahead and click on Create Distribution. All right, it, well, you know, this seems like a bug in AWS because um, I was expecting to be redirected to sort of a status page, similar to what we saw with the certificate, um, where it would show the status of our distribution. But for some reason, I got redirected to this how-to guide, which is really weird. So I don't know if you guys are going to experience the same bug. I guess that's a bug. But what we can do is just go ahead and go back to CloudFront from the main menu. And there we go. That, that's more what I was expecting. So... Uh, we could see that the status of our CloudFront distribution is in progress. Uh, now, I know this can take up to 20 or 30 minutes or so. So again, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and come back once our distribution is created. All right, so it's been just about 30 minutes and I refreshed the page and it looks like our CloudFront distribution is ready to go. Status deployed. So what we can do is verify that our distribution is running by uh, accessing our website via the CloudFront domain name. So if you just expand this little section right here where it says domain name and go ahead and copy that, we should be able to paste that into a browser and view our website. And access denied. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, I wonder if this is a permissions issue. Let's see. What if we do this? Index.html. Oh, so that shows. Okay. Interesting. So I wonder if it's pointing to the wrong S3 domain. Let's go back to CloudFront. Um, distribution settings. Origin. Origin. I'm wondering if this isn't the problem right here. This may be the wrong value. Uh, okay, let's edit. All right, let's go ahead and pop open S3 and just verify what our S3 domain bucket should be for that website. So I'm gonna open this in a new tab. I'm gonna click on our regular domain without the www. Permissions and what am I looking for here? Um, properties, website hosting. Ah, okay, so this looks different. I think this is actually the value that I need to use. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and let's go back to CloudFront. Where'd it go? Let's go ahead and try this one for the origin domain name. I know there were two options when I set this up, and I think I just chose the wrong one. So let's go ahead and correct the problem here. Okay, let's click Yes, Edit. Um... This looks good. Yes, edit. Okay, looks like that's updated. So let's go back and try again in the browser. I'm not sure if there's any lag time that I need to wait for that update, but let's just go ahead and give it a try. All right. There we go. That looks much better. Cool. All right. So sorry about that, guys, but um, just go ahead and remember to correct that if you're getting the access denied, 403. Um, all right, and let's go on to our next step here. All right, so the next step is gonna to be to update our A records in our DNS configuration so that our domain and subdomain point to our new CloudFront distribution. Now, if you remember in the previous video where we set up our uh, website in the S3 bucket, we configured a redirect rule so that the subdomain www.domain.com redirected to our primary domain.com. Um, and the way that we can later test that our DNS updates are working is that we'll no longer see that uh, redirect from www to domain.com. And let me show you what I mean here. So if I type in www.hexallenergy.com, the rule that we set up in our S3 bucket is to redirect to hexallenergy.com or domain.com without the www. So you can see that here. All right. So once we make our DNS, uh, our A record updates, we should no longer see that behavior because both domain and subdomain will now be pointing to our CloudFront distribution. Hope that makes sense, uh, but if not, just bear with me and uh, you'll see as we go through the motions here. All right, so first step, let's go back to CloudFront. 
what we want to do is go back. Let's see, we need to grab our CloudFront domain name. So under the general tab, um, you should see domain name. Go ahead and copy paste that. Okay, and let me just verify that that's the correct, yeah, that's the correct value. All right, so once you copy and paste your CloudFront domain, now let's go ahead and in a new tab, open up S3. I'm sorry, not S3. <laughs> uh, in a new tab, we'll open up Route 53. There we go. All right, now on the left-hand menu, go ahead and click on Hosted Zones, and you should see a hosted zone for your domain name, so go ahead and click on that. Okay. Now, start with our first A record, which is do domain.com. Go ahead and click on that, and under Alias Target, here's where you want to paste in your CloudFront domain. So I'm going to delete what we have here. And it'll, it'll pop up right here, so go ahead and select that. Um, confirm that the specified distribution includes the required alternate domain name and has a status of deployed. I'm not sure what they mean by alternate domain name, but I'm going to go ahead and save this. All right, and now we just want to do the same thing for our www subdomain. All right, and let's go ahead and save the record set. All right, guys, it's been a couple of hours now, so uh, let's go ahead and check our site again. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to type in the uh, www.domain.com. And that looks like it's working. So we're no longer seeing that redirect, uh, the S3 redirect to the domain.com from www, which indicates that our CloudFront um, A records are in effect and they're essentially overriding our S3 rules. So that is, uh, that is our proof that our, um, we're pulling this from the edge location from our, our CloudFront distribution and everything is working correctly. So that is pretty much it uh, for this lesson. One thing I'd like to say in closing is, you know, unless this is, uh, unless you're doing this for a production website, then I would go ahead and clean up your CloudFront distribution just to make sure that you don't, you're not getting charged for something that you're uh, not really using. So I'm just going to go back into CloudFront and select my distribution and disable it. We first have to disable it before we can delete it. So that'll just take a minute or two. And I'll just pause the video until that's done. All right, so now that this is disabled, we can go ahead and delete our CloudFront distribution. There we go. And with that, we are finished. So, all right, guys, so thanks a lot for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed this content, if you found it useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.